Welcome to D2 Bites, a show where our guest and I serve up quick conversations over snacks. My guest today is Senior Account Supervisor Melissa Silva, and we're diving into data. Data is, it's such a big word that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So what comes to mind for you when you hear data? Uh, for me, the first thing that comes to mind is storytelling. I kind of see data as like the raw material for crafting compelling narratives. Um, early on in my career, I was very intimidated by numbers. I was never particularly good at math. So the idea of analyzing data to help me in my career in any sort of way was like terrifying for me. So eventually I had this boss that helped me kind of reframe numbers in my mind, seeing them as more tangible things. And once he kind of reshaped that narrative for me, it helped me understand data analysis a whole lot better because numbers weren't this thing that made me so paranoid anymore. They now became these tangible objects that I could use to tell a story and help me do my job better. And that was kind of like a really invaluable like experience for me. I have a, a content creation background. So I always considered myself to be more on the creative side and then now just becoming more involved in digital marketing. Like you have to dive into it, like the analytics. You have to see how your campaigns are doing. You have to see how things are being uh, being impacted by by what you're doing. And I think that it's, it's such a, you know, left brain, left, right brain situation, the type of work that we're in. Definitely. I think it's important to take a step back and to really look at the numbers and understand what that means for your campaign and the success of your campaign. Um, I think a lot of times it can surprise you. Other times it just validates your thinking, which is always nice. I think once you get to the point where numbers no longer intimidate you and you kind of see them more as a tool to help you do your job better, it really just elevates your work and what you can offer you know, whether that's for your particular organization, if you're, you know, part of a marketing team at a specific company or you work for an agency, either way, it really just steps your game up altogether. You've worked on the agency side and on the client side. And how have those two different environments changed your approach to data? I have worked on both sides, but I don't necessarily know that it's changed my approach to data because ultimately the data is going to inform how to make your campaign better. I think it's just about analyzing the data and finding actionable insights that can help you take the campaign to the next level. And sometimes those actionable insights are gonna hurt. You might have a flop, but it's okay. And it, as long as you're able to course correct, I think that it's important to let the data kind of guide you. And I think that's equally important whether you work on the client side or the agency side. It's just kind of being open to letting the data kind of reveal the story to you and accepting that for what it is and then acting accordingly. How much does your gut or your intuition play a role in deciding what to do next? So I think data is really important in making informed decisions, but it's kind of like the foundational basis for those decisions. I kind of liken it to data is almost like a map and it's going to show you the terrain and all the potential routes, but your gut, which comes from experience, is going to tell you that if I go this way, X, Y, Z might happen. So you have to allow your gut to, to kind of guide you a little bit too. I don't think it's necessarily a 50-50 split because what have you ever said oh, I felt or my gut instinct was telling me. And then you were like, I'm so mad I followed my gut. It's usually the opposite way around. You're usually like, my gut was telling me and I could kick myself now. So how do you, when you have all of this raw data, how do you figure out what, what pieces that you need to make the puzzle that is your story? So I think a lot of times um, people can get paralyzed a little bit by the uh, just like the sheer amount of data that's coming in. And it's really easy to start just analyzing data for the sake of analyzing data. You might find something that like interests you or something that you weren't expecting to see. And then you just kind of go down a rabbit hole. So uh, while I can I'm kind guilty. of, yeah, same. <laughs> while I can kind of like catch that bug myself, I just like want to know more or understand more. 
sometimes I have to just take that step back and take a breath and remind myself, like, what is it that I'm looking for? What are my campaign objectives? And what was I trying to do? What am I trying to learn? And how am I trying to improve? Or how can I improve? Yeah, I think like with with a lot of our clients, um, they they want to reach healthcare providers, they want to reach clinicians, um, and they want conversions, they want form submissions. I think any sort of audience insights is really good, uh, irrespective of the audience that you're particularly uh, presenting the data to. So if it's marketing teams, it's about t- understanding the engagement level from the audience side of things. So what sort of content is resonating with that audience? What's driving their behavior, any sort of behavior whatsoever, whether that's clicking on an ad or submitting um, a f- a form on a landing page, I think it's really important to understand what's prompting them to make any sort of next step, right? Um, But if I'm talking to sales, they're going to want to see the form submission data, right? They're going to want to know exactly who to talk to. If it's John Smith in Wisconsin, they want to go see John Smith in Wisconsin. I've definitely presented the audience data to marketing teams and they've said, we've got to send this to the salespeople because they can see that this company has clicked on the ad six times, but we haven't seen a conversion yet. So, but we know this person and this person and these contacts at that company. So let's go knock on their doors and follow up with them. I think it's also diving a little bit deeper and then actually letting the sales team know, oh, by the way, this particular lead clicked on these types of ads. This is probably the product or the area of interest for this person because it's helping facilitate that conversation offline for them. And I think it makes those conversations a lot stronger because then you can say, hey, we primed this audience, your sales team went in, and then they closed the deal. And that's the ultimate goal. That's it for today's Bite Size Chat. Catch you next time on D2Bytes. Okay, can we film this whole thing in ASMR? Oh, yeah. We can do the whole thing in ASMR. Should I just start eating an orange? Is that an ASMR? Yeah, you just chew it into your mouth. Yeah, just chew. Just oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> chew into your mouth. My misophonia is acting up.